Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. This Ramadan I'm raising money for the orphans and the poor in Gambia. I'm doing it with my trusted spot charity started by a friend. It's grassroots and allows donors to go and visit. I've been twice and here you can see the boreholes we collected for last year thanks to your generous donations. Link in the description. That's a Jannah. In Sahih al-Bukhari, there was an instance that subhanAllah I found really profound and I wanted to share it with you guys, especially in Ramadan. That's right, in Ramadan. It's very important for us to know this guys, yeah, because a lot of us unfortunately, we lose hope because of what certain brothers and sisters tell us and make us feel hopeless in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they act like they have some sort of monopoly over the religion. Wallahi, Allah is free from these people. Allah is free from them because Allah's doors of mercy remain open till you breathe your last. Even if you're on your deathbed, you can ask for forgiveness. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you wait for that because you might not be given the tawfiq, the ability. But regardless, there was a, a person at the time of the Prophet ﷺ who kept, who, who drank alcohol, he was brought to the Prophet ﷺ, he was punished. Okay, then it happened again. He was brought, he was punished for drinking alcohol. Then it happened again and it caused one companion to say, May Allah curse you, what's wrong with you? Which seems like a justified reaction. How can you do this again and again? Yeah, again, how, are you not learning from your mistakes? And the Prophet ﷺ, to stop this companion, the Prophet ﷺ said, he loves Allah and his messenger. Now bear in mind guys, this is somebody that's been drinking alcohol and getting punished repeatedly. But the Messenger of Allah says he loves Allah and his Messenger. And guys, this is this is profound. Shah Muhaddith Dahlawi, yeah, he's a famous scholar of the subcontinent. He says that it is possible to do big sins but still have the love of Allah and his Prophet. That's why, guys, it's very important that you know when somebody is doing sins, don't just discard them, yeah, don't just get out of my house, some parents like to say, go on get out, that's not helping them, what you're doing is you're discarding them at a moment that they're truly vulnerable, yeah, help them, support them, when somebody's struggling and on the floor, you don't just say, oh you're on the floor, you're useless mate, get out of here, you help them up, you dust them off, so these people need support, so if you have somebody like this in your family, support them, for they may love Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And guys, don't look for any excuse to excommunicate somebody because we don't know. I know people misuse this word, don't judge me. And this is a two-pack line, but give people the benefit of the doubt, especially when it comes to the religion. Because honestly, a lot of people that are mashallah doing good work in da'wah, once upon a time, let's face it, they were waste men and they'll say it themselves. I was a waste man. Ali was a waste man, Muhammad Hijab was a waste man, we all were, yeah, but Allah cleaned us, Allah purified us through Ramadan, through Salah, through His divine mercy and all of us have different timings that we receive this divine mercy. So let's support each other and think, if the Prophet ﷺ was alive, what would he do in this situation? People would come to the masjid, they would urinate, the Prophet ﷺ would speak to them accordingly that that person that came and urinated and the Prophet ﷺ told the Sahaba to calm down, this person eventually accepted Islam. Yeah? So you never know guys. So let's bear this in mind and let's leave it there. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum.